You didn't mention that most Advantage plan drug coverage is not creditable should a person opt to switch to regular Medicare. In fact, if a person opts to switch to traditional Medicare, there will be penalties galore. Oh goodness. Literally everything about this point is incorrect. I've been going at this YouTube thing now for about four years and it has produced some interesting comments. Some of them are genuine questions. Some of them are radically incorrect myths or misunderstandings around how Medicare or other related programs work. So I wanted to start a new series where I take these myths and these misunderstandings and I answer them for everyone. Not all of them warrant long videos like this one, so I'll post many of these as shorts and TikTok videos. Now, I will never show the names of the people who made these comments, so if you do have your own questions, don't hesitate to ask them and know that you'll never be called out by name. This is not meant to embarrass or harm anyone. It's meant to take all of the swirling information that exists out there and straighten it out a bit. So for the person who wrote this, they are a subscriber and I sincerely appreciate you bringing this up. All right, our first edition of this series is a doozy. The commenter typed it with such conviction that some may think, hey, that sounds right. Unfortunately, it has several issues and I'm gonna go point by point. I do have a computer off screen here that I'm gonna be looking at. So it says traditional Medicare requires that supplement accept you with all pre-existing conditions conditions without penalty. This is kind of true in four situations around four very specific time periods. Number one would be your supplement plan open enrollment period. This is a six month period or window that starts the first day of the month that you turn 65 if you sign up for Medicare at 65 or if you go on Medicare after 65 because maybe you were covered by a company insurance plan that window will start once you sign up for part B. After you sign up for part B, you'll have six months to buy a Medigap plan, even if you sign up while still having employer coverage. Now, the second window of time would be if you have a special enrollment period. There are several examples of these. Some common ones would be if you were on an Advantage plan and you moved outside of your Advantage plan's coverage area, or if you're on an Advantage plan and that plan leaves the market. This does happen every year, and it's more pronounced here leading into 2025. The third way to get a supplement plan with no worries about pre-existing conditions is to use a Medicare Advantage plan trial right. There are two different trial rights. The first is if you go on Medicare at your 65th birthday. This has to be your 65th birthday because this is the only time that your Medicare Part A, Part B, and Advantage plan effective dates or their start dates are the same. If this is the case, then you can be on an Advantage plan for up to 12 months. If you want to switch back to Original Medicare and a supplement plan in that 12 month window, you can do so without medical underwriting, meaning you aren't gonna be asked medical questions, you won't be denied. The second trial right is if you pick up a Medicare supplement plan first. This does not need to be at 65. So if you go on Medicare after 65, but your first choice is a supplement plan, and then you decide that you want to try an Advantage plan later, once you switch off of the supplement plan and onto an Advantage plan, you have up to 12 months to try that Advantage plan out, and then you can go back to Original Medicare and your supplement plan with no medical underwriting, no fear of denial for pre-existing conditions. The last way to get a Medicare supplement plan without underwriting is to live in one of the three and a half states that have open enrollment year round. They are New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and then some companies in Vermont allow this. Vermont is not a state that has a state rule around it, but there are companies in Vermont that will allow this. So outside of these four reasons or examples, supplement plans can and do deny people for pre-existing conditions if they are severe enough, and then they can charge higher than normal rates for less severe conditions. And to be fair, the commenter did suggest this towards the end of the comment. All right, continuing with the comment. Since Advantage is private insurance, your coverage can be affected by those pre-existing conditions, creating a situation where healthcare denials are more prevalent. This is not correct. Advantage plan enrollment, approval, and whether or not you can stay on that plan have nothing to do with any pre-existing conditions. The Advantage plan cannot deny you access to the plan. You will not get kicked off of an Advantage plan because of your health. If an Advantage plan cancels your coverage, it is because they have canceled that particular plan for everyone on the plan. They can't target individuals and then kick them off the plan. I have an entire video around Advantage plan denials that's right here that pulls the actual claims data to show you how prevalent denials are in real life. And the numbers are substantially lower than most people realize, but they do happen. All right, next point. You didn't mention that most Advantage plan drug coverage is not creditable should a person opt to switch to regular Medicare. In fact, if a person opts to switch to traditional Medicare, there will be penalties galore. Oh goodness. 
literally everything about this point is incorrect. First, for an Advantage plan to offer drug coverage as part of the plan, it must be creditable. There are literally zero Medicare Advantage plans that have a Part D plan included with them that are not considered creditable. They are all creditable coverage drug plans. Now, there are Advantage plans that do not have a Part D plan attached to them. These are built for folks who already have creditable coverage through things like FEHB or VA coverage, so they don't need an Advantage plan drug plan. But if an Advantage plan has drug coverage, it is creditable, always. And if you switch to Original Medicare in a standalone Part D plan, you will never see the Part D penalty because you are on an Advantage plan that had drug coverage. Continuing with the comment. In addition to the Part D penalty that is assessed for having non-creditable drug coverage during those years, again, this is 100% wrong, the supplement plan has the right to charge a premium based on pre-existing conditions that would not be levied had they selected traditional Medicare at the start. Now, this is mostly true. We covered that in the first part. If you don't get a supplement plan during those windows that we discussed, you do need to go through medical underwriting and you could be charged higher premiums than other people your age because of pre-existing conditions. Not only that, again, if your health is poor enough, you could be flat out denied a supplement plan. All right, back to the comment. States can and do control supplement plan premium hikes, ensuring that the company requires it to be able to meet their possible liabilities. However, states do not regulate increases in out-of-pocket maximums or deductibles. Therefore, Advantage plans, while charging zero premium, can, without regulation, hike the deductible and out-of-pocket to levels that are impossible for most people to handle. Deductible and premiums for Medicare supplement plans are set at the start of each year and supplement must also reveal their rates during open enrollment, whereas Advantage can game change as needed since no regulatory body oversees them. Oh goodness. There is one sprinkle of truth in here, followed by a whole lot of trouble. Yes, insurance plans who offer supplement plans are regulated by the state in which they register and file their plan. They must submit their proposed rates and rate increases for approval by the state. I worked at an insurance company that only had a supplement plan. I can tell you that the state never told us that our increases were too high. The insurance company shows the people in the supplement plan, those who are covered by it, the premiums coming in, the costs going out for claims, they build in a projected risk score plus inflation and several other factors, and then they submit their rate increases for the next year. In 2025, the average annual rate increase for supplement plans across the country for this year is 9.9%, so we'll call it 10%. There are many that are well above that. I've seen 60, 70% increases. In addition to that, if you're on an attained age supplement plan, which the vast majority of states are, you could get a second rate increase on your birthday when you attain a new age. So the idea that supplement plans are state regulated and thus safer from rate increases is not a solid argument. Yes, you won't see a thousand percent increase unless that plan block is closed, it's a small insurance company and it has a ridiculously high cost year. Then if the company can justify a thousand percent increase to the state, it can absolutely happen. That's not realistic at all, but it's not impossible. But you would also not see a thousand percent increase in your Advantage plan max out of pocket. Also, supplement plans do not publish their rate increases during the annual enrollment period, which is from October to December of each year, like Advantage plans and standalone Part D plans. The insurance companies choose their own plan renewal schedule, so you could see your letter with premium bumps in January, April, or whenever your insurance company has chosen their renewal rate. And this doesn't have to be the same between insurance companies. United Healthcare can have their own plan renewal date that is different than Humana's, which is different than Aetna or any other insurance company. The point in the comment about how the state does not regulate increases to Advantage plans and Advantage plans can game change as needed since no regulatory body oversees them, the commenter is correct about the state. The state does not regulate Advantage plans, but the federal government sure is does. The federal government regulates and sets how much Advantage plans can pay as a commission. The federal government regulates how much Advantage plans are required to put towards claims and benefits from their payments that come from the federal government. The federal government regulates and continues to add more regulations around prior authorizations and required approvals and denial justifications. The federal government regulates the maximum max out of pocket on Advantage plans, meaning that plans cannot have a maximum out of pocket above a certain number. For 2024, it's $8,850 is the absolute highest max out of pocket for in-network services. For out of network, it's $13,300. The federal government regulates nearly everything with Advantage plans and consistently gets more and more strict on Advantage plans, which look, 
I'm all for the government making sure that Advantage plans are doing what they say they will do. Advantage plans most definitely cannot game change as needed. They submit their plans to the federal government for the upcoming year, and then the federal government must approve them. Then these changes are required to be sent to anyone on that plan in a form of an annual notice of change, or ANOC, that many of you have heard me talk about often. This letter goes out in September because every year, anyone on an Advantage plan can switch from their current plan to a different plan during the annual enrollment period, again, from October 15th through December 7th. And if you made an Advantage plan switch that you didn't want to make during that time, you have from January 1st through March 31st during the open enrollment period to make that switch back to a different Advantage plan or back to the one you had. Or if your Advantage plan leaves your area, you are free to choose another Advantage plan or go back to a original Medicare and a supplement plan with no medical underwriting as we discussed in the very beginning of this video. An Advantage plan cannot game change as needed mid-year and you have so much freedom to change Advantage plans on a regular basis when they are changing things and letting you know about it. Now, think about this with me for a minute, especially when talking about things like the maximum out of pocket or deductible or anything else with Advantage plans. Advantage plan insurance companies want to earn a profit. We can all agree that that is the case. They only get paid by the government when somebody picks an Advantage plan. If somebody does not sign up for their plan, the insurance company does not get paid by the federal government and they have no opportunity to make the profit that everybody gets mad about. So an Advantage plan company wants to get as many people on the plan as possible, which is why we see all of the commercials every 30 seconds during this time of year. And what so many people seem to forget is that they want people to stay on their plan as long as possible. That maximum out of pocket number on the plan is an important thing to look at because if they have a $5,000 maximum out of pocket and then that insurance company's competitor has a $3,000 maximum out of pocket plan, you may be on the $5,000 plan for one year and then because you can switch every year, jump to the $3,000 plan and the $5,000 plan just lost you and the fee that they are getting from the government because they had you on the plan. So not only are the maximum out of pockets regulated by the federal government and other benefits that Advantage plans offer, but the competition between different Advantage plans acts as a regulator around how crazy the changes these insurance companies would make to you and your plan. The craziest change they can make is cancel the plan altogether, which happens and we've discussed it on this channel and you have ample time to switch to a different plan for coverage or even move to a supplement plan if you want in that situation. Okay, the last point that I'd like to make here is that we do need to know the reality of Advantage plans. They are managed care. The insurance companies that offer them are trying to be profitable. So are the insurance companies that offer supplement plans and more often than not, whatever insurance company you're looking at probably offers both. What can change mid-year is that you may have a doctor who decides to go out of network with an Advantage plan and your doctor dropping from that Advantage plan's network does not qualify you for any sort of a plan change. For most plans, you are dealing with a network. You can and will have prior authorizations. You may have denials. Advantage plans have weaknesses. And for some people in certain situations, these weaknesses are way too big to ever consider an Advantage plan. For others, in different situations, they are not. So I feel like it's my job here on YouTube to explain how Advantage and supplement plans actually work and clear up myths like this because the commenter heard this stuff from somewhere and they were convinced enough of these myths to comment on a YouTube video so people genuinely believe these and other myths that I'll do my best to clear up here in subsequent videos. Again, I love Medicare supplement plans. I understand how Medicare Advantage plans work. They both have positives and negatives. I'm not pro one or the other. I'm pro whatever plan is best for you. All right, my secret code word for this one is Mythbusters. Let me know if you like the idea of taking comments like this and questions to clear things up and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more. Seriously, a sincere thank you to the person who wrote this comment. It provided a great learning opportunity. I will see you in the next video.